Hey, it's Jeff from Home Renovation DIY here, and welcome back to part two of our IKEA kitchen series. Uh, we're installing all of our finished doors and drawers and trims today, so if you have not seen video number one and you need to, then click the link right here, and it'll take you right to the very beginning where we install all the cabinets and talk about all of that awesome system. But today we are talking about finishing it off because our process here was really quite simple. First, we put in the cabinets, designed our space, got our appliances all sorted out, got those purchased, and now we're back here finishing off all of the different kinds of options here. So this is cool. We originally weren't sure how to finish this off. Do we go with a three drawer or the two pot drawer system? Um, all the different bells and whistles that IKEA has to offer. So what we have here is a combination of what's gonna work really well for us. And we're gonna show you how to install the doors and the drawers, the garbage unit, the three drawer unit, the pot drawer unit, all the end gables, the island, all the unique differences when it comes to working with the dishwasher space. There's no dishwasher yet, but we can measure off and put in our end panels. We have our King's Bottle fridge here that's facing out the other end. So we have to finish off around this as well. And we also have an area at the far end where the cabinet meets the wall. That means we have to build a uh, fake return out of the finished trim. So we're gonna go through the steps to build your own custom return pieces as well. So you can install that and have it look like a professional did it. When we're all done, I have my whole installation here so far. My investment is at about $2,200 Canadian. So that means that I've got all my cabinets and all my doors and drawers and hardware for 2,200 bucks for this whole kitchen. That's a steal of a deal. So just remember, if you're designing your own kitchen, don't be afraid to think Ikea. We went without upper cabinets to save a fortune, built ourselves a little bit of a pantry on the side here. We got more storage than we could ever dream possible and it's going to function really well. So let's get into how to open the Ikea box. Don't use a knife. So the first thing you need is a knife. <laughs> but don't cut through the top because all of these finished panels are just a piece of cardboard and a finished panel. There's no protection. You don't want to scratch it. So what you want to do is come from the end, get underneath that cardboard and cut that tape joint right there. All right, and then just peels open. The packing tape is not very strong. They've designed this so that it's very easy to manipulate and open up on your own. And that is the finish that we're going with. Ta-da! Our door, this is our color, that's our design. Now, I think the best way to handle this is to get the camera repositioned so that we can have really good close-up shots of where the assembly and the installation, because I'm not an IKEA installation expert, but I have installed a few IKEA kitchens before over the last 15 or 20 years. And so I'm going to be reading through the instructions and going through all the mistakes and all the changes that I've experienced in my lifetime. Hopefully that information will help you out and it'll take some of the fear out of doing this on your own. Because honestly, if you have a screwdriver, you can do IKEA. So the first thing that you wanna do is you go down to IKEA, you have your plan, all of your base cabinets, the measurements of them, and you go to the little kiosk there where the person in the yellow shirt is sitting there, they're looking to look through. They know their system. There's thousands upon thousands of options for purchasing orders. So don't try to do this online yourself. Take the time to go down, put them to work, because they're gonna get everything you need and you're not gonna make mistakes and leave things out that are crucial to success. So what I did is I said, I have this cabinet and this cabinet, this is what I wanna do. And he just went bam, 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 typed it in. I went and picked up the order, it took me 20 minutes, done, right? Nice. What they do is they're gonna send you with all these doors and drawers. So what I do when I get home is I take the whole order and I locate everything in the cabinets that I'm going to be installing them in. And I put the doors and drawer faces on the top of the cabinet. Now I'm organized, right? Because if you just have 100 boxes sitting in a room, you're gonna to be totally lost. So organizing yourself before you start makes a huge, huge difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take my knife and I'm gonna cut through the glue strip that adhesive there so I can open this up. Now, wow, usually these guys got a lot of packaging. You get an idea what's inside that box, right? So now that I know how this box is packed, I know that I can take my knife and I can just cut this open. All right, now we can work. Now, years ago, I worked for a company 
that installed office furniture. And that doesn't sound like a glorious job because, well, it wasn't. <laughs> but I did learn a few things about installing furniture. And we always keep the box and build on top of the box because that'll protect the surface underneath from making mistakes. Now these systems are, at first glance, a little complicated, but the reality is they stick together relatively simple. We're just looking for the instructions here real quick. Here we go. Wow, lots of paperwork. Oh, I love it when it's a whole book. God help us all. Generally with IKEA, as long as you can look at the picture of the product before you start, you have an idea what's going on, feel free to read through this because this one piece of information is going to be the same for every one of the same boxes. I only have to do this once. And trust me, these boxes here, they look a lot different, but it's the same situation. It's the same kit in here, but this panel is actually the, the bottom of the drawer, okay? So it comes attached to it. Because these are huge pot drawers, the panel comes attached, but it's the same situation. So the, the process for installing is going to be exactly the same. I would imagine, if I'm wrong, we'll find out in a minute. So it's going through the process. So, boom, 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 slide that in. Yes, okay, click. What is the options for inside there? Otherwise, turn to page 14, okay. Great, so you'll see that the instructions have options for you. The IKEA kitchen cabinet drawers can be installed on the interior, all right, of the unit. And then you have a door, and you open the door and then you can pull the drawers out, or they can be installed with drawer faces that go close to the outside of the cabinet. So they tell you to go to page 14 to learn this system, because these little connectors here are gonna have a different lo location. And that makes sense. Everything snaps together. Number 14, where is it here? Oh, here we are. Okay. That's for the bottom drawer location. For the top two, go to page 20. They make this really easy. So let's just go through this one step at a time. We'll put this together. Try not to waste too much time on camera showing and talking. And right away, that's hinge locations, fantastic. This comes in every box, the hinge locations, you just count up the number of holes to a certain place and that's where all your tracks go. So they show you all the different configuration options. Brilliant. Get that handy. All right, let's start with this. First of all, make sure that you pay attention to the detail in the pictures. Okay, look at that, the, the angles and, and the profiles because you can't assemble it in the wrong direction and that will drive you nuts. So this is the back of the cabinet of the drawer, sorry. And this is the inside of the drawer. So, when I'm clicking this together, I wanna to be doing this a certain way. Ah. You'll see, it's actually pretty easy. Okay, so I'm gonna show the detail. This right here, these little two things, they're actually gonna snap over top of the detail of the drawer. And they're gonna, they're gonna snap in place, right? So if you don't hear that snapping sound, it's not installed properly. So do be careful, because that would be maddening, going through all that work to install your drawer, and then it doesn't slide in because it hasn't been snapped together properly. Now these are the mounting tracks. We're gonna set those aside for later. Here's the bottom of our drawer. They have a groove track, a finished end, and an unfinished end, okay? The groove track goes facing down, right? And the unfinished end goes into the base first because that's actually the back of the drawer and this will be the front. So we just got to line this up. All right. And you have to have this pinched to the right width so that the grooves that are in this tracking go inside those grooves. There we go. So now it's solid. It won't pull apart. Drawer number one, okay? Now all of this hardware pretty much is for the door face. Drawer face, sorry. We'll go through this, that's for the face. Boom, 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 yes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just so that I can make quick work of the assembly, is I'm gonna keep all of the hardware and the tracks set aside, and I'm going to build all three of these drawers 
because I need room to install this stuff. <laughs> and we will save. We will just get organized for mass production here. Okay, so here we are. We're at page 14 to do our drawer faces. Now, uh, here's the thing. The drawer on the bottom, it's installed a little bit different than the other two on top. And what I mean by that is, and I learned this one the hard way, in my experience, <laughs> I've, this is one of the reasons why I've learned to read instructions. I built the kitchen and I put all the drawers on and I didn't read the fine detail about the location. And I ended up having all of my bottom drawers were sitting in the wrong location. So it was kind of maddening. Now, you'll see that there's a detail. And in the picture, there's a detail of the sticker. Very important that you position this, relatively speaking, to the instructions. And this is why you want the cardboard, because that's your finish. Let's try to keep things clean here. You want the sticker in the same location. And then you take out your hardware pack. It comes in two sections. All right, we've got these. We've got all of this. Okay. You want to take the that same location, and it goes into these holes here. Now, this is the key. You see this? These two holes line up, but there's three hole locations on that hardware. All right. And so for the bottom drawer, we're going to use this location here. I know that doesn't sound like much. But is it ever a change? Because on page 20, for the other two, the whole locations are different. Same spot on the door, but if you come over here, the other two drawers get installed. It's this hole and the one in the back. This is only you know, three quarters of an inch from the edge. This is an inch and a quarter from the edge. You see the difference? And what that does is it takes the face of this drawer and it drops it down to cover the bottom of the cabinet. So these two are designed that the drawer faces will be next to each other. This one's designed to go lower. So very important to get the right combination of install here. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole lot of trouble. Now, in this particular drawer set, I've got a big one, a medium, and then a tiny one. So it's a 5, a 10, and a 15. So I do have that benefit of being able to identify which one goes on the bottom real easily. Here we go. Now I'm going to screw that together. And I'm going to finish assembling that drawer all together. Like I'm going to put the racks and the rails in. I'm going to do the whole drawer once so I don't confuse this and start running into problems. Now, they do suggest in the picture to use a screwdriver to put all this in. Okay. Because you don't want to over tighten. If you over tighten, you'll end up stripping the material that this is made of. Remember, this is a high density fiber board. And so if you screw and you drive and you drive and you drive, you're just going to end up shredding the interior of that material and it's not going to hold the hardware. Okay, feel snugging up. Feel free to stop. Now, I've been using these drills for a lot of years and I've got a good relationship with the sensitivity on that trigger. But when I'm done, you know, if you have to work too hard to try to turn that screw, then, yeah, there you go. Then you just really shouldn't be. You're going to run into all kinds of trouble. Let's go through the rest of the assembly. It also has, because it's the bottom drawer, this other hardware clip. Let's get all of this somewhere where it's not going to cause an issue. A lot of little moving parts truth is, guys, once you get going on this, you can do it more assembly line-like. You can fire through this whole project relatively quickly. Let's get rid of the plastic. Okay, Let's just sort them out so that you can identify all your parts. You seem to have two of just about everything here, except for this. Okay. Now we're organized. Okay, I'm reading upside down and backwards. <laughs> um, both of these products are exactly the same. We don't have a left and a right. That makes life easy, but again, we have three hole opportunities. So, because we're following the bottom drawer installation, we have to go back to number 14 for the location of this hardware and the location of those screws. So that's the location of the hardware, and the screw location is the top two. 
Okay, there we go. Once we have that figured out, we're okay. Again, these are plastic hardware. Using the drill is dangerous. I like a little risk in my life, otherwise it just gets boring. You know, for the sake of the camera, I'll show you how long this takes to do this by hand. You can spend all day long doing this if you like. You get a good workout, <laughs> making sure you don't go too tight. But I'm using the drill. Okay, now we're ready to attach it to our drawer. Wow, that took no time at all. Now, here we go. Now, if we go any further, I'm going to mention this because they don't show you this in the, in the book. They don't show you how to disengage this if you make a mistake. But I ran into this problem once and I went back to Ikea and I said, hey, how do I disengage this locking system once it's in there? And they showed me the system. There you go. That's ready. Now, if you ever have to disengage this bad boy, you will see there's a screw right here. And that's the adjusting screw. But underneath here, you can actually get in there and you can turn this thing as well and disengage it. I'll show that a little bit later on. Let's get back to building these things. So this is our drawer for the bottom of the cabinet, right? Now, before we can install that, we've got to get our rails on. They come left and right. Make sure you have one of each, okay? Okay, so here's our first little hiccup with our system. When we installed this, we have the high back. I have two of them, and I have, here, here's the second one. I'm just gonna show everybody what's going on here because you're gonna run into the same problem. And here's the short back, okay? You see this? It's a really short rise. Now, according to their instructions here, if you have a short back, which is that picture, this clip here goes on the second holes because it's relative to the same height as this. And that is where this rod, where's the rod? That's relative to where the rod goes, okay? But on the high back, the rod goes way up here. Okay, so this location is actually wrong for the, the bottom drawer. So I'm like, why am I confused? Because I'm following this. In this scenario, it's the bottom drawer. The bottom drawer is tall. I'm looking, I'm looking. That's a, it's a tall, tall cabinet. It's got three holes. But now I'm realizing that these instructions are based on the size of the back. I went through the whole book. There's a tall one, but it's a tall face with a short back. There's no option in the book for the tall face with a tall back. And so it's gonna leave a lot of confusion in here for everybody. Ikea, put in the instructions for the tall face with the tall back and maybe write it out in, in the language that we all communicate in so we know what's going on. How maddening is that? Okay, so right out of the gate, I've gotta make a change with my installation. Because following the instructions step by step in this scenario is going to result in a failure. Interesting. I promise to show you the good, bad, and the ugly. Here's part of it. Okay, so now the hardware that came in this package makes sense. We have these clips here. Okay, yeah, that lines up with that hole. Great, okay. So now I'm following the clip advice here because it shows the short clips. Now I have a package with the short clips, but only for one of my drawers. My other two drawers are both getting this installation. So in theory, we will follow this. <laughs> See if they have information here regarding the clips. <laughs> so this is entertaining, all right? so. What I did is I realized that I'm probably following the instructions for the other hardware because there's a minor difference in the package. So I checked the box for the instructions in the other package and sure enough, here it is. Wow. Okay, so they don't have one instruction manual for every drawer. 
So note to self, when you're doing this, make sure you open up, read the instructions from the box you're installing because if they're going to have different instructions for every different variation of box, you're going to get confused to no end. What I'm going to suggest is perhaps organize yourself like we are, do all of the bottom drawers from all of the same box codes following the same instructions. <laughs> This is where experience is going to pay off. My goodness, okay. So, yes, this is going to show it. These little clips here, they go down in here, and you just force those into place. My fingers are too fat for that, but there we go. All right. Well, we'll keep on following along here. Now we're going to snap in the arms. Become white and gray so that you know what? Why is there why are they different? Oh, that's the left and the right. That makes sense. This snaps in again. You should hear the snap. There we go. And okay. And then that snaps in and that covers over. But for now, let's leave this off. Because what this is, it's actually an adjustment bar. And this part I know. So when you put your drawer in, if your drawer is opening at the top or the bottom and it's off kilter, you can actually adjust the, the distance between the back and the front with this little wheel here, okay? And so that you can get a nice flush finish. So we'll leave that detail off for now. Look at that, they even use the word click. Make sure you hear the click. They show how to do that and demonstrate that. Okay. Now, we have another feature here underneath. Now make sure always have your finished cabinet on the cardboard when you're working. They have this little gizmo here. So this goes at the face of the cabinet and we get three screws here for this. The idea here <laughs> is they want to put this little safety clip here, which actually physically attaches the inside of the drawer to the drawer face. Yeah, this is really entertaining. And what it does, it's structural strength. Wow, this is gonna be really hard for me to do this on camera, upside down and backwards. I'm going to, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And of course you're thinking to yourself, just like I am, how come my key doesn't have a pre-drilled hole? But since these drawer faces can be installed in different locations, I guess they figure it best not to pre-drill. Here we go. This is an important detail actually because these drawers, the hardware on the sides and everything else is designed to carry a lot of weight. But this is just particle board. So if you don't reinforce it in the middle between these tracks, then all of that weight is gonna bow out. Now at the back, you've got a metal tracking system that carries lots of weight, but right here is the weak spot. So if you don't put these clips in, you're gonna run into trouble down the road. Okay, so that's done. Let's move on now. Oh, finally we get to install the cabinet. Okay, so now we have the instructions for where to put the tracks. Now, left and right side, of course. This is the front of the drawer, and they're showing to install it. I know there's holes all the way in the back, but generally those are for shelves. These door drawer glides get screwed into here and the mid part, okay? And generally speaking, the first hole goes in the first line, the third hole goes in the third line, and they all correspond. The first drawer gets sit right on the bottom, so this one's actually kind of easy to install. Now it's gonna install, I mean like, just a hair off the bottom. So, don't be alarmed if it moves when you're screwing it in. It's just a little bit of gap there, so it's for the mobility of the unit. Okay. And then three for the other side. I'm excited, Max, because uh, we're about to put a fresh drawer in. Now, <laughs> now we also have to take into account the soft close system for the drawers. So the, the soft close you can install before or after. But basically what happens is it just sits on the top of the track and then you pull it into position, okay? So I'm just gonna reach back here and slide that in. There we go. There we go. And we can see if it works. Perfect. And the last little bit of information on the drawer system is, of course, yeah, 
this and this. Okay, well, let's get this in then. All right, so let's put our drawer in and make sure it functions properly. This is gonna, worry, it's gonna feel really clunky here. Force it all in, it assembles all of the track system, done. Okay, now it's assembled. It won't slide off and it has soft close. That is the strangest feeling in the world when you're putting that together. You really gotta just trust the system because it's just clunk, 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 clunk into place, but it, that means it's working. Now, you have decorative panels here to cover up the side of this to make it look pretty. But for now, we're gonna just leave it in the drawer along with the stops that come for the panel because we're going to align everything and balance it all out later. Not sure why I have a screw. It's the most irritating part of the whole assembly is to have a screw left over. I'm gonna save that for later too, just in case. <laughs> okay, so now we've got the, the 15 is done. So every 15 inch drawer face will be exactly the same. So all my pot drawers are gonna be 15s. So the bottom's gonna install just a little differently with that one locking hardware to adjust the face to cover the bottom. Other than that, all of the drawers in this whole kitchen are exactly the same as what I just did, except for the 10 and the five. All right, here we go. Small modification here. Again, make sure you're reading your instruction manual. So I'm gonna turn this around so that we're looking at it the same direction as the camera. Again, there's the sticker, okay? Let's get our hardware. This is this one. This again is where having the guy at the store is really crucial. They know the difference when they're ordering the tall back of the cabinet versus the short back of the cabinet, and they know which hardware pack goes with what, so feel free to let them do their job. All right, let's get all of our screws and hardware out. So now we've got everything orientated the same way. Now here we are. So the top drawers get installed a little different. The bottom drawers are like this. The top drawers are all up here, right? So let's make sure we get this all installed. And really the key is when you're reading your instructions, make sure you're on the page that has a picture of the location of the drawer where you're putting it. There's only two kinds. There's a, inside the cabinet at the top, whether it's a three or four cabinet, they're all the same, the top three. The bottoms are the ones that are different and you need to follow the right instructions on that particular page. And everything will go well. Okay, now in this orientation, go to the next page, because we're doing the top, the tall drawer, right? This goes down here and it goes in those two holes. <laughs> Again, there's that long screw. <laughs> Wonder where it's supposed to go. Okay, snap that in, snap these on, put in the anchor legs. You can see that there's not a whole lot of variation one to the next, but the devil is in the details when it comes to the location of those, of the hardware, right? Okay, here we go. My favorite part of the job. <laughs> All right. All right, so that is done. We'll set that out of the way. All right, so this is where the other book comes in handy. This little thing comes in every one of these kits and it is the master kit for all the different assembly options that you have. So what you have to do is you have to pick the one that works for you. So we have a three drawer system and this little clip means the top of the hardware. So you wanna look at the picture for what your system is. That's mine, five, 10 and a 15. So that's us. So now I am looking, I am 13 holes. So while I've got this out, I'm gonna install the rest of these guides in the box because um, according to my picture, I am 13 holes from the bottom and then 21. So I figured this is a really good time to put these in. All right, get the soft clothes installed first. 
That's a left side. Now right side. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm ready for my box. So, 13 holes. Now, if you look really careful at this diagram, okay, you'll see there's a little dash next to that 13. That's in line with the bottom, bottom, the bottom of these two holes. So that means the 13th hole, the screws go in there. And this is in the way for doing that. You actually have to pull the drawer forward a little bit in order to access that hole. Fun wow. But let's do it proper, okay? I'm gonna use the back to count. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is where I wanna go. So here's my 13th hole, all right? So I wanna do that, make that mark, and then 21, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 21. Okay? Translate that information to both sides. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, and once you've got that set up, that'll make installation a whole lot easier. Okay. Whew. Okay. So on and so on and so on and so on. <laughs> then we're ready to install all of our cabinet drawers. A little irritated right now, if you can't tell, because I'm looking at this, I'm like, no, I've got it assembled right. Everything's at the right track height. The bottom is covered. This is my gap for the top, but the guy from Ikea gave me the wrong back of the drawer. Ay, 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 ay. That means I've got the wrong box with the wrong hardware, and I've got to go back to the store. No big surprise. Um, that's just lovely. So, I can't finish this assembly until then. So let's move on. Don't be surprised if this happens to you. Like I said, there are thousands of products, a lot of different options intermingled. And even the guys that are sitting in that computer all day long ordering this product for us, they're making mistakes. So this is human, this is life, moving on. I don't have the right information here to even attach the face of that drawer to this cabinet. So I can't even put the hardware on it. And what I'm gonna do to protect it is I'm gonna leave this on paper in this drawer because at least that's the right product and the rest of this is going back to Ikea because it all came in the same box and I'm gonna have to exchange it now the good news is Ikea even with an open package will take a return so I'm not gonna have any problem with that the downside is is I can't finish my kitchen install today but you know holy first world problem right at least I got the option to solve my problem just for the quick drive into town. And I'm not going to be waiting six to eight weeks for delivery. Because when a kitchen company that manufactures a custom kitchen makes a mistake, and they do, you got to wait. It's usually the best turnaround time I've ever found was up to two weeks if they manufactured on site. But most of these guys are manufacturing in some obscure place near a forestry region. And then they're going to be shipping it to you. So at least when you have an IKEA problem, you have an IKEA solution. Here we go. So the next one we're going to show you is the base cabinet that's designed to be the garbage. Now this is the uh, garbage and recycling unit. There's actually um, the entire cabinet is one pull-out drawer. So they have a unique system designed for that because it actually has two drawer faces. They have this little hardware assembly here to connect it all and a traditional drawer install I'm sure that goes with it. Yep, we've seen all this before. Nothing new here. Fantastic. Now, for the rest of the install, I'm going to build it all standing up because that is a lot of fatigue crouching on the ground doing this, I'll tell you. I'm getting too old for that. Now, there, you see that? This is one of these moments where you just go, oh, <laughs> I'm ever glad I didn't have an attitude about IKEA because I'm the idiot that made the mistake. These are both 18 inch cabinets. And I, by my own ignorance, wasn't paying enough 
attention to the picture. I don't know the codes. I don't work with this every day, and you won't either. The point is this. The drawer that I was assembling over there is actually designed to go in here, and this one is designed to go at the top over there. I missed that when I was sorting it out. So, tell you what, I'm going to finish building the drawer for that cabinet right now. <laughs> uh, egg on face. Okay, here we go. No worries. Listen, I'm doing this to help you, right? Because this is the kind of maddening garbage you're going to go through. So when something bad happens and you feel frustrated, take a step back because you might have made your own mistake and not even realized it, and that's okay. So this is the information we need for that cabinet. Right on. Let's build that drawer real quick because this is not going to take a lot of time. So what I found is if you hold it with your pink your fingers, right, and you line it up, you can use your palm of your hand to keep the, the drawer kind of square and tight and then feed it down. There you go. <sighs> That's nice. Now, we're just going to rescue the other drawer face because this is what we need. We're going to identify the location. Yes, this is what I was looking for. This piece of information right here, right? So I've got my picture, I've got that, I've got my hardware. And relative to the picture, my hardware is here and here with those screw locations. That was the missing information that I was unable to just move forward without having. You don't want to ever guess, because every time you think you understand IKEA, they will surprise you and do something completely contrary to what you're used to, and it won't make sense until you're done. Okay. You know, it was a glutton for punishment even taking this project on on camera. Because, you know, when you don't install this stuff every day of your life, there's just so many little details. This snaps in here. Comes up. Uh, Alrighty, and you'll notice that on the small drawers, they don't have the need for that hardware because they're not going to have the same kind of weight in it. That's an interesting concept. Details 21, yes, that isn't going to change. We're going to just stick that in now. Now, I always suggest pulling the arms out, setting it down. There you go. Okay. Now we're back to the garbage. Let's just get some of this hardware installed and out of our way. The soft close for the drawer. Yeah, everything is very left and right sided sensitive, eh? Okay. <laughs> uh. You know, if this YouTube thing doesn't work out, I could always maybe get a job installing IKEA. By the time you're done one of these kitchens, you're going to be pretty much an expert. <laughs> Here we go. So this cabinet is made up of two... Oh, good. Just packing dust. Two 15-inch doors. Right? So that gives you 30 inches in total, which is the height of all of these base cabinets. And that's information that will help you disseminate what goes where when you're building. So here we are. Now we have to open up this little piece of hardware here and read the instructions for how to assemble these two doors together. Hardware pack. Once again, all of this is going to be very detailed, I'm sure, in the instructions. And I love how they do little details like this cutout here. It may not even be a functional issue, but they make sure, I mean, they've got arrows printed on everything. They do a really good job of keeping things organized so that you can follow the instructions. And when in doubt, take one of your drawers that you have installed and use it for all your extra hardware, okay? Uh, don't ever throw anything out. You might be surprised. <laughs> you know, even, uh, even a week from now, you might be like, oh, I wish I had a couple more of those little bumper pads. Just keep it all in one spot. There we go. Now let's get back to this. The end of our cabinet looks like 
we're supposed to attach these with long screws. Got them. All right. Ah. Okay. So we got the hardware here. It's showing an interesting location. Oh yeah, look at that. Right down there. Okay. So it's going to take a little oomph. All right. You really want to sit on this, snap that down, and then line it up. There's a hole over here on each side. You can line that up. All right. And then they want you to put a screw in it. That's a lot of screw. Yeah, they're asking to put a lot of screw. Okay. I'm going to take their advice. Remember, IKEA is the engineer of their own system. If you don't want to follow their system and follow their advice, then you're just going to be making up your own system with their product. You're running all kinds of problems. I want to make sure that I'm... Yeah, it's pre-drilled, so it'll take it in the right direction. Nice. That's what that long screw is for. You can put it down the middle. Oh, okay. Sure, if you really feel that's necessary. They're showing us here, depending on the number of doors and panels, you can cut down the bracket. Okay, the top isn't actually necessary. So you could cut this off if you wanted to and have a separate top drawer pull. But we're not doing that, thank God. There's enough work installing these kitchens already. Last thing I need to do is get creative. Now we've got to find the picture that corresponds with our assembly. It's the two drawers, page 21. Love it when I can turn near the back. Here we go. So for the bottom drawer, they're telling us to assemble the track system here in conjunction with the pins that lock the drawer together. That's detailed information. There you go. Screw all that together. Hats off to the IKEA engineers. This is really easy. I honestly thought this was going to be the hardest part of the assembly, but that's just ridiculously easy. Of course, they're going to be showing us to put more screws in. Uh-huh. In conjunction with these. Okay. Let's follow this now. All right. Here we go. That location's there. Oh. I need some more of those screws. <laughs> A handy dandy hardware drawer. Okay. Oh, it's so much nicer standing up to do this. I think I would have passed out if I had to be crawling around on the floor all day building this stuff. All right. Okay. Now, they don't want these nice and tight. They do want these spacers in here. Looks like they're just temporary spacers for during assembly. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow, so many screws, eh? And everywhere, basically, you see a hole in the cabinet poking through the hardware, they want you to screw it down. And that'll make this incredibly rigid. That's why... <laughs> There's a plethora of screws. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. Now, wow, okay. Oh, I see, these are two. This takes you back to model plane building here. Put this on as a cap. Oh, I see, it's just a decorative cap to cover the edge. Probably because it's gonna be for garbage and they don't want crap getting stuck in that gap. That's really well thought out. Next up is to put that in. I got a little zealous here. Get ahead of the game just a touch. <laughs> okay. So even though we're incorporating a new system with the track, the way the door and everything else is being assembled is absolutely identical. You really want to make sure that you're lined up as square as you can possibly be on this because there's room for a little bit of movement. There we go. And now they give you all of these screws. We're going to use them all. In 
incredible. What they want you to do is screw on both sides of the hole in the middle. Real careful here because you can twist things out of position in a hurry. You really want to get right in the middle of the hole. And then one over here. Do the same on both sides. And then you check again for your square. And if everybody's happy, then you fill up every one of these holes with a screw. Because that, at the end of the day, you're going to be opening this up with one handle at the top. And you're going to have potentially a garbage cans that have got a fair amount of weight in them. So they're using every one of these screws to help transfer the load of that pulling action. They are not messing around. They want this thing screwed together like a submarine. This is unbelievable. That is like almost 40 screws. And they've got the picture telling you, use a hand screwdriver. Somebody's been drinking. <laughs> it's not happening. All right. Okay, Doki. Now we get to assemble the drawer. Here we go. Let's find out if we know what we're doing. And... Aha, that's much better. Now, I'm gonna screw that little door to the back. I still think that'd be a great place for a pre-drilled hole. <laughs> okay, so in this situation, they're asking for two more clips. And oddly enough, they want that one on an angle. There we go. There's cute little black screws for this. They're really over-engineering the, the idea of this carrying a lot of weight. You know, but better to over-engineer than to under-engineer, I guess. Eh? Okay. Snapping our control rods. There we go. Now, since this drawer is installed in the base of the cabinet, the two tracks for that went exactly the same place as the last one, right on the ground, and then you just stick those six screws in. All right, so we're getting near the end of the experimentation phase with the assembly here. <laughs> this is really, that's quite a solid unit actually. I'm gonna set that in there. Again, all that bumping around, that's not an issue. Okay, so, like before, we use the control arms, we can make all of our adjustments. Um, and that is good. We're gonna put the bumpers on that. Just a small modification down here. But remember, I was mentioning earlier about the idea of um, popping a drawer off if you needed to. I'm gonna show you that right now. We're gonna just explain this because this is really awesome. There's a set screw in the back and it, it will raise or lower this drawer face. And then this one here will adjust the side to side position, okay? And if you feel like you've made a mistake and you need to take it off, right here, there's a little flat piece. And there's a slot at the bottom of that, that if you lift the flat piece, it exposes a slot head screwdriver. Okay? So you take your screwdriver and you just ram that in there. And you give it a turn. And it'll actually pop off the assembly. It releases it. Okay? Now... Once you've done that to both sides, okay, it comes right off. There we go. This is in case you've assembled the hardware on the wrong location on the door. We're using the wrong screw set and it's not closing properly. You can take that off, you can reset the screws, and you can snap all this back together again. There you go. That'll give you the ability to make all the adjustments you need to get all the, everything lined up because you do not want to install a handle on any of the hardware until everything is lined up. Whew. Now, let's go work on the base cabinet. So the base cabinet here, I have a 36 inch and they have a 10 inch top plate and then two 20 inch tall doors. Now, I asked him about the top and apparently the hardware comes in the box. Let's see if he was right. Hmm. 
<laughs> no hardware here. Okay. And I'm not putting any faith at all that there's going to be hardware in the door kit. Because why in the heck would there be hardware in the door kit? Yeah. Okay. That's just great. Yeah, and there's obviously uh, there's obviously a bracket that we're missing here that gets screwed to this. <sighs> I do not have any extra bags. So I'm not worried about this because I'm actually just mad with myself because I asked him, I said, so the hardware comes in the box or where is it? Because I know it's a, like a huge L bracket and you put in the screws and you can adjust them a little bit. You can crawl underneath your cabinet and lay in there and make minor adjustments up and down. Oh well, that's maddening. But it's not going to stop us from getting the rest of the kitchen installed. We're going to do that later. And let me just get my door hardware here. The door hinge hardware, this is where you'll find the instructions. It's like opening up a Chinese fortune cookie. All right, here, na, 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 na. It's obviously how you do it. And location. Good. Nothing new there. If you're not sure where to put it, just remember that the doors will cover the bottom of the cabinet, just like the drawer does. All right. Now this is the best system ever. You push that in the hole, and then when you close this bracket here, it causes an expansion to happen with these side panels. Okay, here, let me show you here. And that expansion is all it takes to create enough compression to hold it in place. See right now they're loose, and I, now they're firm, but they're pushed out. It's actually kind of cool. Done. For installing it, if you need a guide, all you do is just hold your door and flush with the bottom, right? And you can see it's on the second, and it's here. I'm just going to take a moment and take my marker and mark my location. So that one and that one. Good. Okay. Because this mounting hardware is really difficult to install if you attach it to the door hinge first. All right, let's take it, push it in the holes. Grab yourself a soft mallet or a tape measure. All right, and then you screw in the screws. Be careful. Again, you're dealing with some plastic in the hardware, so you don't want to over tighten this. Now these just sit in the bracket and then snap in. It's also a quick release. Okay, so like when we're time for us to do the plumbing and connect the sink. I'm actually going to just pop the doors off, put them somewhere safe so they don't get damaged while we're doing it. Okay, here we go. And of course, everything gets these little tabs. So we put the tab on the bottom of the door and it makes contact. There is also, you have to buy these separate, okay, for all your hardware. But IKEA is famous for their soft close technology. And all you do is you set it on top, right in here. Now, I've got to make sure I get this right. There we go. <laughs> okay, so a little disappointing about the top plate, but hey, if you made it this far in your kitchen and you're doing it yourself, I'm sure you can figure out how to put on an L bracket. We're not gonna lose any sleep over that demonstration today. One of my favorite design elements about the IKEA kitchen is that they always have these gables, right? So we have a take a look at the drawer cabinet. You can see, you can see that's the end of the box. But then these gable elements come out and they extend past the box to encapsulate all your doors and drawers. Now they come 26 by 36. So the 24 inch cabinet, is usually when you put this on, um, up against a wall, you're fine. And they give it a little extra room so that you can scribe them into place. They're also amazing in an island because it can encapsulate both sides. This is why they're 26 inches. I'll just demonstrate this before we cut the height. In this scenario, 
I can go full extension over here for that side. And then over here, I can put a back panel on and I have enough depth left over to add a back panel and decorative doors. So if I wanted to do uh, a replication of all doors across the back of this to look like cabinets, then you can do that and you would be perfectly fine to do that. What we're doing is actually, we're gonna be doing a build out in a custom made back side of the island. So we're gonna leave the full extension on it, but I've got to measure and cut for the height. Now, the way you do that is you don't wanna cut the gable at the countertop. That's a mistake, okay? That'll be very noticeable and very ugly. So, find a surface where you can lay it down. Always stick your side up. That means this is the inside of the cabinet, okay? And generally you wanna do something like mark the top. So you can keep your reference, okay? You just take your measuring tape, because especially in an old house like this, nothing's ever level. You go 34, 34 and an eighth. And you measure from the top down. You use a straight line, connect the dots, and then we'll run it out to the saw. One thing to pay attention to when you're opening up your boxes, it says don't use a knife. It means down the side here, because this is the finished panel. There's not a lot of mercy there, right? But there's a little box right here. Always save the box, because this is custom sized screws for attaching the panel to the cabinets. If you go to the hardware store and you buy cabinet screws, you're gonna find them are gonna come at one and a quarter inch long. Now, get ready for this. This screw is one and an eighth, all right? And the difference is this. I'll just take this random panel here. If you were to measure and put this screw up here, let's say we're screwing from inside the cabinet. I got lots of room there, right? That looks great. If that screw was a little bit further, that's like the standard in a box is one and a quarter, you only have an eighth of an inch material left and because this is like a high density fiber board, okay? What happens when you drive that screw in at one and a quarter, you get little raised dents in the panel. So you don't wanna have that ugly look. So make sure you set aside these screws because they are a lifesaver. Now these screws are amazing. You can use the pre-drilled holes if you like. Doesn't really matter, but I'm old school. And you just drive it until the drill says otherwise. There we go. Beautiful. So the last thing I'm gonna show you about the IKEA system is of course the baseboard. Now, if you remember, I told you at the beginning of the video, save these little weird shaped looking things. And here's why. The way this all installs, once we get rid of the packaging, this stuff here is like for model airplanes. Break it off and you can stick it on the end if you have an exposed end. But since we're using all these end panels, we don't have need of that. There we go. This system is simple. You put these in, you can rotate them and lock them in position and they lock on the legs, all right? Nice and easy. All you have to do is cut the length and then the height. Now there's two sides to this. One end has a little rubber gasket here and it's designed to keep water from getting under the counter when you wash your floors. And the other side is designed for easy cutting so you can cut the height. Remember the legs for these counters are adjustable so you might have a situation like I do in my old house where you have to scribe a little bit the detail on this. But that's no big deal. Now for the purpose of our education today, I went ahead and I prepped this one up for us. Okay, and I'll show you how easy it is to snap these things in place. Hey, ah. we'll just get down in position here. So remember when we put the feet together, we have these adjustable discs that slide up and down. And we're gonna put these down now near the bottom. And what that does is it sets a depth the same as the ring, okay, that sets. So this is gonna end up square when you push it all together. Oh, there we go. Now we gotta get that in there. And all we do is slide it in place. There we go, and snap it on. Ah, baseboards. <laughs> yeah. 
Thanks for watching our video today. If you learned something that was helpful, then give us a thumbs up. So consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notifications so that you are notified every time we have a new video, which should be about twice a week. Okay, so if you want to see what we're currently working on, then check out our link for Instagram. It's in the description down below. And other than that, maybe if you're renovating your house and you're looking for a little more help, we do have a members program. We're here to help you out. Check the link right here and look at our member program. It might be right for you. Otherwise, consider clicking this link and you can watch some of our favorite renovation videos that help you out in the future.